Hello, my guest today is Jakob Boyens, the founder of Share Together, an organization that has taken on the issue of fighting sex trafficking worldwide. Thank you for having me on. Thank you, Epoch Times. You're amazing. Your voice is amazing. Thank you. Um, I want you to help people understand the scope of sex trafficking. Let's start in America. In, in America, it's a $32 billion industry. We're talking about exploiting people for sex. It's modern day slavery. It is. Look, I come from South Africa. We understood slavery. We understood, you know, uh, you know, apartheid. This is modern day slavery. And it happens because it's in our communities and it's hidden in plain sight. So it's, it's a real problem, but there's a reason it's a problem. It didn't just happen. How can you know that number? It's a shocking number, but how can we have a number and not know about it? Yeah, we, we try. And look, I'll tell you, 1% of the crime is reported. And so it's very hard. Numbers in this game is so hard because it's so hard to detect a crime. You know, I, I can take a pound of cocaine and weigh it and say it's a pound of cocaine. But when you take a child and that child's been abused and that child can't even remember how many men, it becomes really hard to track. But to the best of our abilities, when we track this, these are the numbers we come up with. Numbers such as 76,000 children a day in Texas, over half a million in the U.S., 30% 30, 30 of the children that comes across the border today will end up in sex trafficking. These are just the realities. Because it's sex, it's everywhere. There's not a single household that doesn't have sex. So where is, what level of, levels of society is this happening? The at? infiltration is, is at community level. It's no longer just that particular area of town. It's in the neighborhoods, it's in the schools. It is the runaway, it's in the foster, foster care system. You saw, you saw the Boy Scouts of America, an age old organization filed for bankruptcy a week ago because of the sexual exploitation claims against them. That's how deeply it's infiltrated in the Boy Scouts, in, in, in Boys and Girl Scouts of America, in Boys and Girls Club of America. It's, it's, it's an epidemic because it's so hard to track and, and it's so difficult to talk about. People have just shied away from it for so long that it, now, now it's a problem. Because of the scope of it, there are also seem there must be people turning a blind eye to what's no, happening. No, for sure. No, look, it's aided and abetted, a hundred percent. Here we sit with this amazing organization, and you're giving it a voice. CNN will not touch the subject. MSNBC will not touch the subject. Nobody on the left will touch it. They turn from it. They know it's happening. We've got district attorneys around this country that will not prosecute it. They will not. They will not take it to a court. It, because when they have the perpetrator, not just the pimp, but the, the man paying for sex, and it's predominantly men, okay? women too, but men, the guy paying, that's the number one culprit. That guy's creating demand. Supply meets demand. They will not take that guy in front of a jury because he's a community leader, he's the school principal, he's the guy next door, he's the fire chief, he's the sitting U.S. state senator. They've arrested all these people, all these job titles, because it's immorality. And so. We have embraced an immoral culture in the 60s. This is where it started. Rome fell, not because of a military force. Rome, the most still the most powerful regime on earth in history, fell because of one thing, sexual immorality. There's not been a culture in society in history that has survived making an agreement with sexual immorality. We embraced sexual immorality, the sexual revolution in the 1960s. We're paying for it now. It takes three generations and you pay. We're paying right now. You, ca you cannot survive as a culture when you become sexually immoral. It's different than other sin. A as believers, what we would say, or other perpetrations like, like drugs or alcohol. Sex is it's primal. So when I violate you at that level, when someone violates you at that level, it's not external. You can't say, well, it's alcohol. It's one, one issue removed. And there's an internal issue that makes you drink. If sex is against your, it's, it's against your wiring system. So it challenges your belief system, how you see yourself, who God is or is not, what is love, what is fear, what is acceptance. It challenges everything innately. And now you're dealing with a 12 year old kid that is absolutely unequipped to handle those questions. These are questions that's tough for adults to figure out. You know, as a mom, let's talk about how it's a proactive attack on our youth. They are actively introducing sex through pornography to our boys in this country, and the average age today is eight. So eight-year-old boys today get introduced to pornography. How, how is this happening? Online. 
It's free. I'll show you. I can show you right now. It's free on YouTube. It's free porn on YouTube. It's free because they understand. Organizations like Pornhub, you pay for Pornhub. They will, they will display a lot of free content on YouTube. YouTube knows this. Facebook knows this. Google knows this. This is why they're crying, hey, don't violate our First Amendment. We have the right, you know. This is why, this is why Facebook today is working really hard on end-to-end -end encryption. They don't want us to be able to see what they're doing. They know. It's over 120 million images of child porn distributed on, on Facebook last year. They know this. Everybody knows this. The, the authorities know this. But they're hiding behind the First Amendment. Well, you, you can't violate. You can't censor us. I don't want to censor you. I want you to censor yourself. I want you, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, to write algorithms to protect children. 18 and over adults? Okay. You've got an argument. But children? Come on. You know, it, so th there's an active force attacking our youth. Why? Why, June? Because it's the only way you can break this culture. You can't break America with a military action, with sanctions from other countries. No way. Kim Jong-un or China, no way. You can only break America when you go into the family. You start messing in the family. And, and also to be clear, this is, it's not, it's sometimes families doing this to their own children. That's the number one rising trend. It's called familial trafficking, meaning someone familiar to the child, trafficking the child. And it's, it's, that, is, that is a very difficult fight to fight. Because now the child's living at home. They're not kidnapped. They're not a runaway. Going to school. They play soccer. They're in the spelling bee. But they go home at night and they're forced to, to, to sell sex by dad or mom to the neighbor, to the school principal, to whatever. It is, it is a very hard fight to fight because the child's psyche is altered. Yeah, the child doesn't see themselves as a victim. Uh -huh. They're told they're not a victim. They're told they're responsible. You did this. You're contributing to the family. This is how we're going to put you through college. All kids do this. This is normal. If you don't do it, I'll hurt mom. If you don't do it, I'll do it to your sister. It's like that. A child protects the perpetrator. We see this with women. Battered women taking a witness stand, defending the person that's bouncing their head off the wall. It, because you're messing with a person's psychosis, with their psychology. It's, it's dangerous. And again, what is the estimated number of children being sex trafficked in the U.S. Today? Over 500,000. Over half a million. And, and that's, a, that's a crime that we know is so underreported. It's a conservative number. Very. Ultra. And, and so we can see how these children, they're, they're damaged psychologically for life. And they're going to grow up and how are they, what kind of members of society are they going to be able Very to be? Difficult. Average lifespan is seven years and because there's always drugs involved. There's coping mechanisms involved. If you if you go draw the correlation between teen suicide, teen suicide that's through the roof in this country, no one wants to talk about it. And the abuse, sexual abuse of children, they correlate. They're in lockstep. These kids can't they can't cope. They don't know where to go. They don't know who to talk to. They're told no one would listen. But what I, what I want want you to know is this: it doesn't just happen. It's happening because it is a tool for destruction. There was a time when drugs was a tool for destruction. It's still, but, but the attack on the attack American culture through drugs was huge. They knew this is how you get America unstable. Today, they know it's sex and children. They know it. This is why we've got groups in our country wanting to classify pedophilia as a sexual orientation. When you say they know, who, who are you talking oh, about? Massive groups. The movement is called Love is Love. It's come from California. It was birthed in, in, in Portland, Oregon. It's in California. There are hundreds of thousands of people supporting this movement. They would like for it to be a bill to so go to the Senate floor. That would make it legal to that have sex. That would classify pedophilia as a sexual orientation. So you have rights as a pedophile. Okay, fantastic. You've got rights. But what about the eight-year-old you're about to assault? Now, I heard that they were going to classify it maybe as like a, a mental illness, but uh, no, no, no. as a there sexual is a, there, is, there are groups who That's want to classify it as a mental illness, but there are groups, very proactive, very well-funded groups, that are moving towards classifying it as a sexual orientation. Like, this is how I identify. I identify as a man, I identify as a woman, I identify as a, I'm a pedophile. This is how I was made. And I've got rights to be a pedophile. Okay, but... Now, who are you going to abuse? And what about the rights of that child? It's, it's a slippery slope. But that, and so because they can't get that yet, this is what they are getting. 
13 states are moving towards lowering the minimum age consent to 12. They got 14. They'll, they'll put it at 12. This is how they're circumventing the laws that we wrote. There's laws against, against sex trafficking where in the same state, they just lowered the minimum age consent. Wow. So now you nullify the law against sex trafficking. Because now, well, no, she's 14, she can give consent. But the law says under 18, she's a victim. But now there's another law that says, well, at 14, she can be consensual. Wow. Come on. You know, that's what, when you, when you talk about the problems in third world countries and the child marriages and trafficking there, 12 is considered a very the low norm. age. Oh, under yeah. Sharia law in the Middle yeah. East, they marry the kids off at eight. So people ask me, Yaku, what do you say about kids in the Middle East? It's child abuse. Well, it's the law. I, I don't care. Not under God. Under God, he says, protect the least. Protect the widow and the orphan. The, the child that's abandoned like that is an orphan. That child's been orphaned. Just like a child in the womb, that, that, it, it, that child has been abandoned. A nation that, that fails to protect its children has lost its nation. You've lost, you lost your future. What, is, what are we fighting for here? Why are we doing this? Why do, Epoch Times exists for us to move society into the right direction for our future. Well, what's more our future than our kids? You know, I think for many viewers, it's, gonna, it's absolutely mind-boggling that this is so prevalent in our society. Well, first of all, it's not something you hear about, like you said. It's yeah. not reported. And, um, but also that, that it's by design, that uh, there are actually people who want to see this come up. And do you have any insight into what, like, is this just like a mass cultural psychosis? Or is there, is it like a... The plan. What is the plan? Yeah. I'll, t I'll tell you this, okay? And, and I, look, I speak. Guys like George Soros, okay, we track George Soros. George Soros will go and he'll fund, he'll fund both sides of the issue. Because that's what real evil does. Okay? Real evil does that. Real evil funds both sides of the war and profit from it, okay? An unstable youth, hear what I'm saying to you today. An unstable youth is in desperate need of big government. Listen to what I'm saying. The way you grow government in this country is you make the youth dependent. You make them unstable. You get them hooked on a drug. You get them hooked on porn. You alter them emotionally, right? You tell them they're entitled to a bunch of free stuff. You give them free stuff. And then one day, when the gavel drops and their lives are falling apart, you go, thankfully, government is here to save you. This is what's going on in our nation. This is how it was done in China, historically. This is how you move towards socialism. So, so look at sex as a tool that's being used and weaponized against people in our country because it is the most effective tool. There's nothing more. Heroin is not more effective. Sex is so effective as a weapon. I'm just telling you. And I just want to emphasize that you, your group has found evidence of Soros playing yeah, yeah, both yeah, yeah, sides. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And not just here, in Africa. Uh -huh. In Africa, yeah, for sure. We're tracking not just Soros, Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood which you track Planned Parenthood and you'll find George Soros, okay? Planned Parenthood funds a curriculum, funded a curriculum called CSE, Comprehensive Sex Ed. It's in 29 states. That curriculum literally grooms kids in the classroom to be sexually exploited, literally. It's in 29 states. It's funded by Planned Parenthood, track it up to Soros. This is what's going on in our country. And the parents don't even know. I ask parents, hey, is CSE taught in your classroom, public schools? They go, yes. How did this happen? It got voted in by your school board. It's for 10-year-old boys, 10-year-old girls. And it's sex ed that's fully illustrated. It's like soft porn in a book. It's asking him a series of questions that the kid never even considered. Now he's interested. Now he goes and Googles it. Now he discovers porn. This is not, this is, it's organized. It's really organized. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, that was You're brave. Me, yeah, well, I, I feel like I can't can't ignore it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thank it. you so much.